Basic Categories of Chemical Reactions. So there are four basic categories of chemical reactions, and then there are specific types within each one of these categories. So we're going to go through the basic types today, and then in future lectures we will go through some more of the specific types of reactions within these types. So we have combination or synthesis reactions. That's when two products or two reactants are combined to create one product. Decomposition reactions are when one reactant is broken down into two or more products. In single displacement, one atom bumps out one of the atoms of a compound and replaces it. So it's a single displacement of one atom. In double displacement, the atoms switch partners. So if you've ever seen that show, like Swapping Wives, um, they swap out partners so that they have new partners. So combination reactions. Here's some examples. Metal plus oxygen gives us a metal oxide. So here you can see magnesium plus oxygen gives us magnesium oxide. Iron plus oxygen gives us iron three oxide. We could also have a nonmetal plus oxygen. Carbon plus oxygen gives us carbon dioxide. Nitrogen plus oxygen gives us dinitrogen monoxide. In combination reactions, so some more examples, we have A plus B gives us AB. We have a metal plus a nonmetal giving us salt. So aluminum plus bromine gives us aluminum bromide. Potassium from plus iodine gives us potassium iodide. Other types are metal oxides plus water gives us metal hydroxide. So potassium oxide plus water gives us potassium hydroxide. Strontium oxide plus water gives us strontium hydroxide. And another example, we have a nonmetal oxide plus water gives us an oxyacid. So sulfite plus water gives us sulfuric acid. P2O5 plus water gives us H3PO4. N2O5 plus water gives us 2NHO3. Some examples of decomposition reactions. Here, a metal oxide can decompose into metals and oxygen. They give the example of mercury oxide decomposing to mercury and oxygen gas. Lead oxide decomposing to lead oxide plus oxygen. Other examples of decomposition reactions are depicted below. The main thing you want to look for is that there's one reactant breaking down into multiple products. Now we get into single displacement reactions. If A is a metal, A can bump out B to give us B plus AC. If A is a nonmetal, A combines with B and C to bump out C and gives us B and A. So here's an example of when this would happen. You can see that there's two reactants, two products, so we can automatically eliminate this being a composition or decomposition reaction. And since we have a lone element that's bumping out something on, on the other reactant, leaving a lone element, we can safely assume that this is a single displacement. So in this case, the zinc is bumping out the hydrogen and leaving the hydrogen by itself. 
So when I talked about ionic compounds, and I talked about how ionic compounds are kind of like a dating relationship. So one of them has a positive charge because it gives up everything that it has in the relationship, but it's happy, it's positive. The other one has a negative charge. So it's a taker. It takes those electrons, and by taking the electrons, it gains a negative charge. And they stay together because of opposites attracting. So we have the positively charged cation that's attracted to the negatively charged anion, and they stay near each other just because opposites attract. But let's say a more attractive metal comes along. Well, that more attractive metal can then come and bump out the cation that was in that relationship. That typically doesn't happen in a marriage. So in those covalent bonding scenarios that I talked about previously, we wouldn't see that happening. Now, how do we determine the attractiveness of a metal? The activity series. So in an activity series, this states that more active elements can replace the le less active elements. So if we go back to our example of zinc and hydrogen here, zinc wants to bump out hydrogen. That doesn't necessarily mean it can. Zinc can only bump out hydrogen is zinc if zinc is more attractive, if it's higher up in the activity series than hydrogen. So let's identify where zinc is right here, and let's identify where hydrogen is way down here. So because zinc is higher than hydrogen, zinc is able to bump out hydrogen. Now let's look at the reaction of aluminum and copper. So this is a single displacement because again, we have two reactants, two products, and then we have single elements on each side. If aluminum tries to bump out copper, aluminum's way up here, copper is down here. So this is possible. Aluminum has a higher activity series than copper. We call aluminum more attractive. So when aluminum comes along, it can bump out the copper. Now what if mercury tried to bump out copper? Well, let's find mercury. Mercury's way down here, and copper's higher up. So mercury cannot bump out copper. So that's why we see that there's no reaction that happens. So when mercury tries to come in and bump out copper, copper has a higher activity series. That reaction is not going to happen. On your chemistry aid sheet, toward the end, there's a page at the bottom that has the activity series on it. So that is a handy chart to use when determining if these reactions can happen or not. On the test, you'll be asked questions, what are the likely products if this reacts with this? And you will have to come up with the likely products. In some cases, there's gonna be no reaction. And no reaction is gonna be one of your possible answers. If you try to have zinc, for example, bump out calcium, that's not going to work. Calcium has a higher activity series than zinc. So you need to keep this in mind when you're looking at those single displacement reactions, because in some cases, no reaction is possible. So consider the following reactions. A plus HCl gives us no reaction, but B plus H or HCl gives us BCl2 and H2. What is the correct activity series? Well, here we go. We have A, H, and B. A is lower than H because it wasn't able to bump out the H. So if we were to put these in order, A would have to be lower than H. B was able to bump out H, so B has to be higher than H. So the least active would be A, the next active would be H, and the most active would be B.
Here are some examples of some more single displacement reactions. Iron wants to bump out hydrogen. Well, where's iron? Up here, and hydrogen's way down here. So that can happen. Copper tries to bump out hydrogen. Copper is down here, hydrogen is up here, so we're not going to see a reaction. Some more examples, potassium and hydrogen. So potassium's up here, so obviously it can bump out pretty much anything. Iron and hydrogen, so iron is here, hydrogen's down here, so that can work. Tin and silver, so tin is higher. Zinc and aluminum, so zinc is lower than aluminum, so zinc cannot bump out aluminum. And here we have nonmetals trying to bump out other nonmetals. So here we have fluorine trying to bump out chloride, and fluorine is higher, so fluorine can do that. Over here, we have iodine trying to bump out chloride, and iodine is lower than chloride, so iodine can't do that. That's no reaction. This reaction will occur if, so in what situation can BA bump out PT? BA has to be more active than PT. The likely products of the reaction between AL and NiCl2 are so can aluminum bump out nickel? Aluminum's here, nickel's down here, so yes, that can happen. So if we combine um, aluminum, Al has a three plus charge, and we have Ni, which we're gonna bump up the charge to determine the charges on this. So Ni has a two minus, and Cl has a 1 minus. We want to confirm the charge that chlorine or chloride does have a 1 minus charge, and that's correct. So we know that this one has a 2 minus. So if we were to single displace these, swap these guys out, we would end up with Ni, and then Al 3 plus and Cl one minus. Now we have to flip down the charges to get the appropriate ratio. So that becomes Al, the one comes down and we just leave it, Cl3. So that's how we get to the three here, because the three is actually indicative of the charge of the aluminum. Double replacement reactions. It's kind of like trading spouses. So we have a wife swap going on or a spouse swap and the A and C switch places. So now that they have different spouses. So here is an example. We have lead and potassium that switch places to become lead iodide and potassium nitrate. We know that a chemical change has happened based on the evolution of heat, so the solution gets warmer. The formation of a precipitate, and that's what you can see here, you can see the precipitate or the chunky um, solid forming, or the formation of gas bubbles. There are some specific double displacement or double replacement reactions that we will discuss in future lectures. Let's go through some of these here. So what are the likely products of the reaction of sodium sulfide with iron three chloride? Sodium sulfide, so sodium is Na plus, sulfide is S two minus. How do I know that? Well, it's in group six A on the periodic table. 
and everyone in group 6a is going to have a 2 minus charge. With iron 3 chloride, iron 3 is Fe3 plus, and chloride is Cl minus. Now what we're going to do is we are going to swap the sodium for the iron. So now this becomes Fe3 plus is going to combine with the S2 minus, and we have Na plus with Cl minus. And we're going to flip down the charges. So this is just NaCl. Flip down the charges over here, and this becomes Fe2. S3. So the correct answer is the last one. And then they're providing a balanced chemical equation for that. What are the likely products of the reaction of sodium hydrogen carbonate with hydrochloric acid? We are actually going to hold off on this one until the lecture that we talk about acids. So we're going to hold off on that one for now. But we're going to go through this activity. So I would like you to pause the video and determine whether each one is a combination, decomposition, single displacement, or double displacement reaction. All right, this first one is a combination reaction. Why? Because we're putting things together to create one product. The next one is a decomposition reaction. We are taking one reactant and breaking it down into its parts. The next one is a single displacement because we're having a single element bump out another element to produce a single element in a new compound. This next one is a combination because we have some reactants coming together to form one product. The next one is a decomposition because we have one reactant being decomposed down into its parts. And the next one is a single displacement. We have a single element bumping out an element to produce a new compound and a different single element.